I have lots of shortcomings. One is I'm not very good with equipment, and the reason I've been successful is I've worked with very good people as partners. Frank Snodgrass, Peter Wooster, others. I'm good at one thing, I'm good at asking questions at the right time. Say, this is really a problem that ought to be worked on now. Okay, that doesn't make me a giant. What do you think Scripps would be like, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, if you had not been here? There, there have been some wonderful people that I've worked with. I loved working with Harold Svelder, who was so good to me. And I worked, work, I worked all my life with Roger Abel, whom I admire tremendously, and he also was my close personal friend. And I, I just think I've been ever so lucky. Now, scripts changed. It was 15 people when I came, including the president, including the director and the gardener. It's now more than 1,500, isn't it? That's very different. Let's move forward a few years okay. to the 50s. You're in the Pacific Ocean, um, interested in research on tsunamis, if I understand it yes. correctly. And you witnessed something that few people have ever seen. You mean Eddie Weetok? Yes. In 1951. Right. I still remember vividly having the mushroom cloud form over me, very much alone in the Pacific in a four by four foot raft, and I will never forget that. You've spent a lot of your professional career um, supporting or advancing the various missions here at Scripps. Yes. And along the way, you've set a lot of people uh, on paths to advance research that you have begun. I've had a significant number of letters of people just now, just this month, saying that uh, something I'd suggested that they do in their work was a, a, mean, a major factor in their career. And that's my birthday present. You spend your morning still working today, yes. right? What are you working and on? In the afternoons, if I don't have to answer questions like now. What are you, <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you working on? Now, I hope I can explain that if there were no waves on the water, you'd have a single image of the sun. Suppose you have waves, you get a glitter point here, which reflected the sun into your camera. And you can calculate what the slopes were, because you know where it is. And so by photographing, you can get the probability of slopes on the sea surface from the from those pictures. And we worked on that for two months out of Maui and published a paper on the probability distribution of, of wave slopes. And it had two things we discovered that was totally a puzzle to us. One is that the waves, you would expect waves only in the, in the direction and opposite to the wind, very little coming from the side. Well, the ones coming crosswind were almost as steep and as big as the ones up downwind. And we still don't understand that. So you're and, still trying to work that out. And I've been trying to work that out intermittently since that time, which is over 50 years ago. And I said, I, before I kick the bucket, I'd like to solve that problem. I've been working like mad to try, and I think I have a solution, and I'm, but I'm not there yet, and that's what I'm working on.